Erling Holland, another one of the many storylines from uh, Manchester City and Arsenal. A quiet evening for the superstar Norwegian as we compare his numbers this season to last. Obviously, not a bad start to this season, but it is uh, notably less productive than a year ago. Uh, Stevie, I'll start with you here. Uh, what do you think happened against Arsenal? How they managed to keep him in check? No, if ever, if ever there was a position on the field where you are relying on your teammate, mm -hmm. it's centre forward. And there's no question that, not just right now, but since the start of the season, Manchester City as a team, and certainly the midfield providing for the forwards, and in particular Haaland, haven't been at the best. Mm -hmm. And so the one guy who's always going to come out the wrong end of that is going to be your centre forward, whether it's Haaland or anybody else. Even at a club like Manchester City? Yeah, absolutely. Well, Manchester City right now are struggling to struggling with the form as, a, as individuals and as a team. And as I said, the one guy who's going to catch it the most is going to be your centre forward. I mean, would you, would you rather... Would you, if you're Man City, do you switch Hoyland? A guy who barges into people, mm. runs in behind, walks his socks off, always sweating, always running around? Or do you want Haaland in your team? Yeah. I think you want Haaland in your team. Yeah. I mean, take those eight goals. Well, look, yeah. the, the obvious one is Kevin De Bruyne, right? Out. Biggest playmaker that they've got. You look at the other players that, that are missing, and then you look at the kind of players that they have at the moment. Riyad Mahrez goes to Saudi Arabia. Spent a fair chunk on the bench, but over his piece at Man City, has been a match winner and been a creator with those jinky runs from the right and crosses and balls, little reverse balls through. Kevin De Bruyne, clearly one of the biggest playmakers with the early ball in, and, and that's great for a striker, early ball. Somebody in midfield or gets turned on the ball, plays it early. And Jack Grealish, who had his best season ever last year, but hasn't played much, had a, long, had a difficult pre-season after the World Cup, enjoyed himself, had an injury. You look at all the players they've got now, or most of the players, apart from Bernardo Silva, who's sort of uh, been in and out recently with injury, is all the guys are guys that want to take the ball for a run. You know, Doku wants to take the ball for a run. Foden wants to take the ball for a run. Alvarez, the same. They're missing a Gundogan who's making runs through the middle of the park, which, by the way, takes maybe a defender's eye off the ball and it leaves a bit more space. They haven't got that midfielder. But all those guys in the wider positions are guys that want to get on the ball and even when Grealish is playing and they want to take it, they want to take it for a run. That's not really getting service to Erling Haaland. What De Bruyne in particular does... De Bruyne, you don't really see Kevin De Bruyne, even now and again, you don't really see him taking the ball past the full-back and jinking and dropping the shoulder. You generally see him get the ball and whip it in. Mm. Outside the boot, inside the boot, early passes. They've got players in the team at the moment that want to get on the ball and get at full-backs one-on-one. -on -one. So his supply line, as Stevie mentioned, his supply line, <laughs> even with good players in the team, is somewhat... The two things that Craig is talking about here this is could be the reason why Ellen Haaland looks like he's now an alien in the Manchester City squad. By the way, hello guys, welcome back to another video. This is the Football Connect. As we do the reactions, we are looking at what Craig and Stevie had to talk about when it came to Ellen Haaland and the reason why he has not really been performing well for Man City, why the number has gone so low, and what is really the problem. So Stevie Nicole is talking about how if there's ever any position in the in the football world that relies on the team is your centre forward as well as their goalkeeper but mostly in the game going forward is their centre forward because you find that he's expecting somebody to come with the ball from the back so that they do something so that he finish the chances that he gets so that he can produce something with his set of skills that we know he's a goal scorer he's a destroyer he will do everything that he can but the problem is this, who is doing that job for him? Like what Craig is even talking about right now, even makes everything more, makes sense more. And it is that everyone who's around him only wants to take the ball on the run. When Doku gets the ball, he wants to run face to face with the defender, play one on one, either try to cross it in, which also it's a problem because when you're taking a player one on one, there are so many players who are coming back into the box. So now you are hoping it falls on Haaland. 
most of the players even the midfielders that the ones who wants to take one one on one then they'll pass it on the side hoping that the cross produces something but here's the problem when you do that you are not taking something away from the skill set Haaland is a player who wants to run on the space maybe you cross it in like what Kevin De Bruyne was doing for him i.e. that's why he was the top assist of the season and he was the top goal scorer of the season and that made Man City unpredictable because sometimes they would expect Kevin De Bruyne to do so and now he will pass it on the side and they will chip it in because people's attention will be focusing on the midfield where Kevin De Bruyne is then the ball comes from the wide now those were some things that were Man City were tricking people against now the fact that De Bruyne is not there where is the the assist coming from? Where is he getting the ball from? If everyone wants to take the ball and come for a run, that is just going to destroy everything because it means the type of assist, the type of the things he has become comfortable to, comfortable with getting the ball and finishing after the crosses or whatever that comes from the brainer. It's no more. So that's why Ellen Haaland is really having a tough time at Man City this season. Let me hear what they're going to talk about as we go forward. They manage because of their style. I mean, let's be honest. You've got Rico Lewis, who's a young kid learning his trade. And, and you've got Kovacic, who, who I don't remember ever picking a pass. You know, he's not there to do that. He's there to get it, give it, keep the ball moving. So, so straight away, w w where's the ammunition coming from? And you're also playing Bernardo Silva out of position. So... <clears throat> Again, no surprise who, who comes out on the wrong end, wrong side of it. You sent him forward. No, but he, has to, he still has to do more within a game. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, I'm but, not giving a, com a complete pass, yeah. but I'm just, he, he in particular relies on service. Ian, what are they saying in England about Manchester City's recent struggles and specifically Erlen Hall and that performance against Arsenal? Well, they only had one shot on target at Arsenal. That's almost unbelievable uh, for Manchester City. Arsenal didn't have too many more, by the way, did they either? But uh, the boys are right. The service lines to him have been pretty poor. I covered Manchester City in Leipzig, and they were on top in that game. And still, he wasn't seeing very much of the ball. He got completely marked out of the game by Craig Dawson of Wolves a couple of weeks ago. He hardly got a kick against uh, Saliba at uh, the weekend and, and Gabriel. So, yeah, by his high standards, he is off form. Well, he is human, after all, after the 52 goals last year. But you know what? If I was the manager of the next team he's playing, I'd be very, very worried about the stats as they stand here because he's due another hat-trick, isn't he, anytime soon? is what makes everything so interesting the way he's explaining it and the way he's talking about that of course there is a problem in terms of the supply line of what they do Kovacic is not really good at that Rico Lewis trying to learn his skill the other player who was able to assist Ellen Haaland in terms of crossings and giving him the ball is playing out of position in Bernardo Silva so you look at that the whole entire team that is now being built upon Haaland, it's not the type of team that can actually help in to make this guy function the way he has been doing. And because that is not happening, we are seeing this problem. That is not happening, we are all crying about it. Imagine a Man City side with Haaland failing to do something easy that you can pass. The passing the ball, like, help me. Help me to make him do something. Hitting a short on target, something we've become so uh, like we are used to seeing it happen on a daily wise every single time. Man City's threat is always coming. Haaland will do something. Haaland will do something. Then you watch an entire game and he does nothing. That's where the problems are. So I don't know how they're going to try to fix this. I don't know what they're going to do, but they need to fix this ASAP because if they can't, problems like this will rise. The media start talking about them. This get into the players' hands. That destroys the entire game. That thing destroys them fighting to try to win it again under Pep Guardiola. That team that people knew that was unbreakable. So, I'm just saying, let's see. Let's hear what Frank LeBoff is about to say. Frank, what do you think? Have we seen some real weakness here from Manchester City, or is this just to be expected over the course of a long season? Well, if they don't get the player that they need back, uh, they're going to struggle. Uh, as the guy mentioned, you know, if you don't get Grealish, if you don't get uh, Kevin De Bruyne, they were missing Rodri as well in the middle of the park. I mean, they're not the middle of the park, that they, the midfielder that they had last season as well. So why, it's hard to compare. 
and uh, and and yes, Alan is not served, and uh, is and I always thought, you know, I would be the striker uh, in my best, in my prime. I would be, I would have been the striker of Manchester City. I would have scored at least 25 goals. So no wonder with the talent that uh, Alan has, he would score like 50 goals. So, but he has to be served with the players who serves him. And uh, the problem is right now they don't because they don't exist. Or the players who are uh, on the field, they're not the type of the type of player that Alan wants to be served. And and uh, and it's completely completely for me understandable to see Manchester City not being that uh, as good as, as they were before. But no doubt that uh, and hopefully for them they're going to get the players back and they. They're going to go back. Remember last season, the beginning of the season was horrendous by Manchester City. They ended up being a champion because we know that in January they get, uh, they, they get everything serious and they, and they do the job. Two teams in Manchester and we're talking about the problems of Manchester City. I know, I know. Like, there's real problems yeah, and there's one. Manchester City the problems. One. I mean, no. trust me, if there's, you know, we're not talking about Manchester City's demise here by any stretch of the imagination. No. Uh, but it's just just by recent standards, you know, the second half at Newcastle in the Carabao Cup mm. was extremely poor when Newcastle started asking them questions. I watched that game that even Ian was talking about, both those games, Wolves away uh, and, and Leipzig away. Lots of possession, but no real cut and edge. And also looked a little weak defensively, something we talked about last week. These are the things that we end up talking about because we are looking at the fact that they are not really performing so well according to the standards that they've set. Remember, there's nobody like them. They have just won a treble with a treble with three P's. Three last seasons they've been winning this league. So they are a, a powerful, a superstar of a team. They have shown that they are capable of doing anything that they can. They can run football. But here we are talking about how they are not doing well according to what we are used to seeing them, which has now become accustomed to us, which is now like a norm to us to see them performing so well. If they're not doing so, of course, questions will be rising, but they're even the worst side of Manchester. They're even the best side of Manchester. Look at how Man United are like, is to Craig's joke, but we can look at how much this is affecting them. Yet, I think Fred Laboe has just made some of the things make sense here. This is not really 90% the team that we have come to know and come used to for Man City. They are playing with players like the guy that they signed uh, from Chelsea. They are playing with Rico Lewis, the kid who is still learning his things. Still Ford and doesn't really play that much. He has not been doing it over the years. There are so many things that has been happening, but you can tell that there are some problems that they need to fix on to if they want to continue with that amazing record that they've come to set as Man City. There is a lot of things that they can change, but we all know that Man City will get this right. Pep Guardiola will set his team right and they'll start winning again. But at this moment, somebody has to talk about it. And we are here to cover what they can do. But trust me, this is just a blip. They'll get their things okay and they'll get going again. That's what we know Man City is capable of doing. So let's hope that these things will be set up well and we'll be able to do so. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. How much Man City can improve? I think maybe Pep Guardiola has to do something. Rather than to try to rely more on the new signings, go back to the players who have been there, who have been doing it, the Jack Grealish, the players that we have not been playing so well, so that they play, so that the new guys get to learn from what they, these guys have been doing and get to try to tether in and get into the team. That could be the best thing that can help Man City here. Of course, we cannot talk about Kevin De Bruyne because he's out for a long time, but let's hope that something is done. Do me a favor, click the like button, subscribe to connect. I'm out. Peace. Subscribe. Another reaction coming soon.